Lucy's all. If secret projects exist, and we think they do, actually hang on. The military for years have confirmed that they are doing secret projects. Many countries are doing secret projects. So can we assume that projects are pretty big and they're pretty secretive? Different compartments, different departments. <laughs> People are part of a project that they do not know that they are part of a project working on the same project together, whether they're in the same building, whether they're not in the same building, or even with the same association or maybe subdivision. Same way they pay their debts or governments, subdivisions, and they're able to maybe even launder money through subdivisions and do whatever the hell they want without us actually ever really finding out. So projects, secret projects can start here on Earth, maybe some parts of it or certain departments. And once something's built, well, maybe the testing can further go on on the surface of the moon and maybe even on to Mars and probably somewhere in that direction. This is the sun, in case you guys and gals don't know, and it's the sun on the 29th when that massive corona mass ejection left the sun. Well, that's the day it happened. I also have some amazing close-ups, some amazing close-ups of the footage on the 30th. And I'm trying to get informed today to see what is going on with that massive geomagnetic storm coming to Earth. You see how bright that light is? You see how large it is? It's expanding. Magnetic fields are lining themselves up. And when they cross over the fields, when the fields cross themselves, it's extremely dangerous. Extremely dangerous. Massive amounts of electricity and magnetism occurs. And when geomagnetic storms occur or are in danger for Earth, like the one we're waiting for, either we were supposed to get it um, in the night, it's 6, it's 5.50 a.m. right now, wow. So either it hit or it didn't. And uh, it's been raining here, so when the rain starts, usually that's around um, when the storm is hitting. So I'm hoping around the world, that things will be okay. This is an amazing video. I love looking at space. I love looking at the sun, capturing UFOs, analyzing it, talking with my community. Um, that's all we can do together is theorize and come up with some evidence, visual evidence, you know, with the equipment that we have. Look how aggressive that is. Do you guys have any idea of the size of this? Of these objects like you could fit earth and you could fit a couple of other little planets inside those spots there that you're seeing look at how bright those spots are i'm going to try to show them to you um, in a way where we can get in as close as we can look at the details in that there's lots going on in those areas and the closer we get in the more we can see we're pretty close. I mean, just look at it. It's the sunspot and the solar flare on top is so large. It looks like a massive square. Funny how the the sun opens up, right? And every time a sunspot opens up, which is apparently thousands and thousands of kilometers, it goes into the heart, more to the center of the sun. Maybe that's how we should... Um, send a drone into the sun, the black hole, and plunge into there to get more information, which, duh, obviously, they've already done. So for me, this is very concerning. So now let, let me give you an example. See that all these three areas, not three spots, there's many spots here, but and many flares. But look at the area. Look how bright it is on the left, that one. That's very scary. Imagine these fields aligning themselves at once, right across the sun. How would that affect Earth? How would it affect um, the weather here? Not going to hide it. La Palma, during the 1971, 53 years ago, 
eruption of La Palma, the sun was at a solar minimum. The sun was not active at that moment. And for three years afterwards, well, the solar flares became less and less, a lot less, went from 104 a year to 66 Point six, which I don't really like the term they gave, but that's the term that is in the history books. And it's massive, just massive, 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 massive solar flares, which I've never seen before. And when I was um, in the six years, I've been five years completed doing this research. I've never seen solar flares like this on the sun. It is concerning. So, wow, guys, Halloween today. Happy Halloween. To all you kids, I hope you get a chance to get out and trick-or-treat like we used to do a long time ago. Um, solar flares. Huge solar storm could strike the Earth on Halloween and disrupt satellites. When it hits our planet, it interacts with the Earth's magnetic field, and it produces currents on the crust of Earth. A major solar flare was discharged from the sun yesterday. One of the strongest yet in our star's cycle. And that's not being bragged about, is it? The flare expected to reach the Earth this weekend. And that's all we have. An R3 strong radio blackout event took place due to an X1 flare. Yes, and it was on October 28th. From the Sun region, 28. 87. I started showing you the sun a couple of months ago. I started at 2860. We're at 2887 for the number of flares to give you an idea how fast these flares are progressing. 2020, we had 220 approximately solar flares. This year, we're going to see. So with the equipment I have, I'll try to bring you the closest view of a real view of something actually lifting up off the sun, which is, I guarantee everyone in this world listening to me right now, it's not something you're going to see often. You have to look for stuff, right, on the sun. This is cloud, right, of plasma lifting up off the sun. It looks always small because we're looking at small images that are far away, but in reality, some of these large flares and um, cloud plasma clouds are far larger than our earth so yes it could be dangerous and you can see it here by bringing exposure down here this is at one point that it was very active nasa was telling us themselves right nobody listens to nasa they say well no but you do know that all the information is still coming from there <laughs> there's certain things that we can leave aside and certain things we can use as information NASA and scientists told me this day, that day, that there was going to be a coronal mass ejection. And I filmed the sun for six hours and I was able to capture it. Absolutely. Here it is. Look at this. The bottom of the sun. We can see some type of anomalies leaving the sun like I caught here. And this a year or two before. It's not every day that you see plasma clouds lifting up off the sun. But here's some proof this is a coronal mass ejection the sun as you see here is reacting on one side as i'm filming and looking through my polarized lens i'm wondering what is occurring there's uh, an opening at one point that arrives as you're going to see right here with the sun and a massive plasma cloud leaves the sun this is massive So for those wondering what the hype is all about, well, that's an object that could be coming right towards, that is coming right towards Earth. But this one was back in 218. So it happens that the sun gets very aggressive when it does. Geomagnetic storms can occur here on Earth. Here's an object leaving during a partial solar eclipse. Here it is, UFO goes behind the moon and appears at the end what looks like it was actually also behind the sun optical illusion or not very large object 
I love capturing these objects. They're not easy to capture. And when I capture them, not many people believe that I'm actually capturing them. So thanks for watching. They are best in the diamond and pond. They from every Friday up in the belly party club and they come and they come and hear so soon. Yeah, aliens up there on the moon. They may be even coming right here soon. Aliens are mighty on the moon. Yes, they are up there. Doesn't matter cause the slow's just coming soon. The slow's just coming soon.